next. We're going out to Will. Hang on. This is what happens when we're outside. <laughs> there he is waiting. Will's out there once again. What's happening, buddy? <laughs> Hey guys, thanks so much. Um, we are here, as we've been telling you all morning long, in Blackstone Valley at Wright's, uh, Wright's Dairy Farm and Bakery. Um, we're also joined by Patty McAlpine, who's uh, one of the heads of the Blackstone Valley Tourism. Patty, thanks for coming in. Thank you for having us. We, this is a great place to start. Yeah, not a bad place to start. So first, if you can, just give us a little a brief overview of Blackstone Valley. What uh, cities and t what towns does it include? So the Blackstone Valley includes nine cities and towns from Winsocket, Rhode Island, North Smithfield, um, Lincoln, Cumberland, Central Falls, Pawtucket, uh, Boroughville, and Gloucester out in the western part of the state. Right. Did I get all nine? <laughs> that to think. <laughs> Smithfield. Sure. Uh, yeah. And so a lot of times when fall rolls around, this is where a lot of folks head because it's very rural. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of beautiful just farms out here. Everyone goes apple picking. Tell apple. us a lot of things are going on. Oh, uh, this is this. You're right. This is the best time of the year. I love the fall, and you know you can still get out and go hiking at Lincoln Woods. You know as the leaves start to turn, or the bike path along the river. It's beautiful. And then, like you said, in farms. You know we have Jaswell Farm for their apples and. Phantom Farm, uh, they pick their own in Cumberland. You know, uh, this Adams Farm um, in Cumberland is actually going to be doing a apple cider donut scavenger hunt drive-through event. Sounds delicious. Coming up uh, Labor Day, uh, September second or Labor Day weekend thereabouts. Um, yeah, so we've all got all the farms, and then we also, right in our backyard, we have a national park. Okay. The Blackstone River Valley National Historical Park with national park rangers. You know, the Smoky Bear sure. hats. Which is great, you know, highlighting the story, all the stories that makes the Blackstone Valley from the Industrial Revolution that began at Slater Mill. We have park rangers um, that are stationed there now outside, you know, socially distanced. Sure. They're also located at, we've got a couple park rangers at the Kelly House, the Captain Wilbur Kelly, Kelly House Museum, which tells the um, transportation story along the canal in the river and how that evolved over the years. And then, of course, we have our other museums and sites. And right out, not too far in Winsocket, we have the Museum of Work and Culture that tells the labor story, the French, this travel of the French Canadians that came to the Blackstone Valley to work. And then we have St. Anne's, the the Sistine Chapel of North America. Right. You know, just so much that's and going on. One of the other things we were talking about even before we went on is the the city of Pawtucket. Mm. Um, People have loved the arts festival that the has gone on festival. in Pawtucket, and they're going to continue on with it. Yes, the arts festival has been a great thing. It's going to be a little bit smaller than years past, um, but they have curated a lot of great events. Um, a few of them will take place at Slater Park. They'll have the restaurant weeks taking place in Central Falls and Pawtucket around at the same time. They're also going to close off Main Street in Pawtucket, and there's some new restaurants um, over at the atrium on Main Street where the China Inn was will be opening up. And they just finished a beautiful mural on the side of their building. And then over at, um, along Main Street, there's the um, uh, EP Kitchen. Sure. Inside the, it's sort of like the arcade in Providence, but it's, you know, black-owned business where they have a number of bakery in there as well. So there'd be lots of stuff going on throughout the city. And we miss a lot of the restaurants that we see all the time. So it's, so it's a great way to get out and support a lot of these places. Yes, and we've been doing a lot with uh, Culinary Alive, going to some of the restaurants to highlight what they have with um, my colleague Joan. Sure. And then, but yeah, the restaurants, I mean, you can tr you could be traveling. You know, you, we have a new Mexican restaurant that just opened up in Smithfield, Lola's, and then... And I just want I just want to mention quickly. Last time we saw you, we were on a boat taking a ride down the Blackstone. Yeah, on the Explorer. On the yeah, Explorer we had a great show. time. Yeah, yeah, that was great. It was and, a lot of fun. and we do hope maybe to get a few fall tours in um, out of Central Falls great. and maybe some haunting swamp tours we'll uh, see. in October. Well, Patty, thanks so much for being with us. Thank this you again this for morning. having great us. Great to have you here. Lots going on in Blackstone Valley. If you're looking for something to do with your family, with your kids, you can check out their website as well. Back to you. It looks great out there. Thanks very much, Will. Mm -hmm. It's always just so much fun to go up there, like we were saying. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. There's so much to do just this time of year, pandemic included. Uh, exactly, <laughs> and it's nice to see everyone's doing their best to get it done. Well, yeah. this morning in our summer staycation, yes, we are headed away from the coast today, traveling instead to northern Rhode Island, highlighting all that the 240 square mile Blackstone Valley has to offer. That is where Will Gilbert is today, live at Wright's Dairy Farm in North Smithfield. Will, how's it going out there, man?
Let me tell you, I couldn't have had a uh, better assignment than being right here at, uh, at Wright's this morning. We're here with Paul DeLude as well, who's the head baker at Wright's Dairy Farm and uh, Bakery. And we are going to make this morning a rustic apple tart that is in front of me. And I can, it's everything not to be able to just dive in and take a bite of this. And we will. How are you, Paul? I'm very well. Thank now, you. Now, Liz How is going to be your lovely assistant today. Yes. And she's going to yep. take us through the process of putting yes. all of this together as yep. well. Sure. Um, first, I wanted to start off. How are things going here, and what do folks need to know when they do come here? Things are going really well. We are open our regular hours, seven days a week. Um, it's important to know that you can go onto our website at any time and order what you'd like from the menu online and pay for it online, and then let us know when you're here in the parking lot, and we'll deliver it to your car. Yeah, so I, we have a completely curbside pickup. So. I was going to say, even driving in, I could see the folks bringing stuff out to the car. It's sure. completely safe, great yep. system Absolutely. that you have uh, set up. All right, let's get down to business because okay. uh, this is going to be the the main the main thing here. Yes. Talk about what we're making. So this is a rustic apple tart that we started last year and um, we make it from a puff pastry that we make from scratch. So we start with a dough and we roll into that dough. This is a block of the dough here that's finished. So every block of dough gets a wonderful five pound block of butter rolled into it. <laughs> so we take the dough, we lay it out and we put the five pound block of butter in and we cover it. And we do a series of, we roll it and fold it right. and we refrigerate it for 30 minutes and we do that up to six times which eventually gives you up to 500 layers, individual layers of dough and butter. Okay. Up to 500 layers in that block of dough. There is nothing wrong with that. There's nothing, nothing wrong, wrong with that. that. No. All right, uh, let's We're on get a dairy farm. Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Why not, right? Yep. All right, so Liz is going to take us through the process and tell us what we're doing here. Spray so some of that So she's spraying down. a little bit of water on there just to allow the dough to stick so that when you bake it in the oven, it doesn't all come unraveled. And she's going to make a border around the whole outside. So we use that template in the center as a guide to make sure that they stay pretty round. And I did one of these the other day, and I said, Liz, I think you need to do it. I, you're doing it better than I am, so <laughs> you need to do it on air. So she was happy enough she to, was into it. to give us a chance. So Now, one of the other suggestions you told me is there's nothing like having one of these with a big scoop of ice cream, which you also sell here. Absolutely. Uh, we sell ice cream as well. We make it all here from scratch right here in our dairy mm -hmm. and process it all. We sell it scooped. We sell it in quartz. Um, so, yeah, and we have numerous flavors. So. And, Paul, what kind of apples are we using here? And does one type of apple work better with this than the other? Well, we use Empires, typically, and Ida Reds. It depends on the season and the time of year. Right. Some stay harder in storage as they're storing them over the sure. winter. So they don't turn to mush. So they don't turn to mush. So we, they blend them for us, and we buy them from a local peeler. They peel and core all these apples and bring them to us right from Smithfield. Oh, okay. So they're all locally sourced, yeah. Which is great. Yep. And Blackstone Valley, I mean, we're here because of Blackstone Valley. And just, sure. it, it's, this farm alone is just beautiful. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, it yeah. really is. Thank you very Such much. Such a great place. Right. So she's got her two crusts are folded, and she's going to put the filling into the center of those crusts. And you don't skimp on any of the filling either. No, we don't. So we use fresh apples, which you see there, and we add the sugar to it and mix that up. Oh, man. It's sugar and cinnamon and stuff, so then, you know, this, then we have this filling that just oozes when it bakes and gets, sure. you can see it gets nice and brown on the top. So we're going to pop that on while she's doing that. I yep. can't wait any longer. I'm going to right. dive in here and take a hunk of this. Give this a try. Um, how soon should people order, order ahead of time before they come and pick it up? Can it be the same day? It can be the same day. You can order it actually from the parking lot from our website if you'd like. And it'll take about 30 minutes to get your order, but you can order from the parking lot if you don't do it ahead All of right. time. I'm oh, going to take a bite he's of this. It's going to take a bite. If you'd like the recipe for this or order something online, you can head to our website, roadshow.com. <laughs> well, throughout this summer staycation episode, we have been highlighting Blackstone Valley, but no, we're not done yet. That's where we find our buddy Will Gilbert, who has some more staycation ideas. Hello again, Will. Hey guys, that's right. Uh, now, Brennan was saying a little while ago that he has never gone to the drive-in, but he's going to head out there for Metallica very soon. Um, we actually went to the drive-in located right on 146. So everybody, pack in the car. We're going to the rustic drive-in. It's been a landmark on Route 146 and a place for family and friends to be together for years. The Rustic Drive-In was opened in 1951. It was meant to all watch Screen 1. As you can see, it's teared up to watch Screen 1. Screen 2 and 3 were added in 1988, and it was obviously modified so that it could be used for all three screens. With everything that's been happening over the last few months, it's as popular as ever. Currently, we're allowed to open at half capacity. 
which is 250 cars. We socially distance cars. Every other car space are six to eight feet apart. You have got to wear a mask to be outside, to go to concession, to the bathrooms. You do not have to wear a mask inside of your vehicle. And you can't watch a movie without snacks. Concession is open, and we hope lots of people come visit concession. We sell lots of things. It's nice right now because no carnivals or anything, and we sell fried dough, and we sell um, fried Oreos, and we have candy and ices, and, you know, it's, it's a lot of carnival stuff, and you can't get it anywhere right now, so that's nice. It's a fun and not expensive night out for family and friends. I've been coming a long time. I'm from Cumberland originally, and I have three children, and as long as I've known, the price has never been expensive for a family of five you know what i mean so like if you're gonna put everyone in your car and go to the movies 27 dollars is the way to go like many businesses the rustic has been able to carry on we didn't open until april so we were able to use a lot of the movies that were still in the theaters when everything was shut down so that was nice so we had we had newer movies out that people didn't really see already so we had a lot of movies that we started with and we're still going we're playing older movies willy wonka jaws this week the conjuring one and two big rhode island hit so you know we're trying and we've been doing a lot of private events it's been really nice we've hosted a lot of graduations We've hosted all sorts of different events, but a lot of graduations. The Rustic has had to adapt to the way we go to the drive-in. We're really promoting the fact that you purchase tickets online, especially on Fridays and Saturdays. We really prefer that you do it all weekend. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? When you come into the drive-in, they're gonna check your tickets, send you in the right direction where you'll then be stopped by a staff member who will place you in the spot that you need to be parked in. We can't allow people to just park wherever they want. Gone are the days of giant reels placed on the projector. We receive a hard drive from the film companies. We ingest them into our projectors and we build shows that way. And then in order for them to play, we have the keys, which is our right to play the movie on the projector. Without them, they won't play. So load up the car and make some memories with family and friends. It's nice to be outside. It's nice to be here with your family. It's nice to not worry about being in an enclosed place, too close to people. It's a different experience being at a drive-in. And it really is a great place to take the whole family. They've had Harry Potter marathons, Twilight movie marathons. You can always check out their website and make sure you buy those tickets online before you head out to the drive-in. Back to you.